Hello, I am the Reverend Dr. Glenn Kelvin Missick. I am the son of James and Helene Missick. I was born on the island of Grand Turk, Turks and Caicos Islands. I moved to New York, I moved to Jamaica first to go to school, and then I moved to New York in 1966. But moving to New York Increase my knowledge of the great heritage and the great culture of the Turks and Caicos Islands because I met people here. I met family members here. I met other people here who had left the Turks and Caicos many, many years ago. And I was able to sit down with them back in the 1960s and the 70s and to hear their stories, I wish I had the technology or the, the instruments such as cameras and tape recorders and, uh, had to, and recorded many of the stories that I heard them tell about growing up in the beautiful by nature Turks and Caicos Islands. Well, as the old saying goes, it's never too late. So... Here we go again with an, another episode of the documentary. It is called Reclaiming the Culture and Heritage of the Turks and Caicos Islands. Today we shall focus on the religious heritage, religious tradition of the Turks and Caicos Islands. And we're on the island of Grand Turk. Now, this documentary is not just about Grand Turk. It is about all of the islands of the Turks and Caicos Islands. It is about Grand Turk. It is about Sol Key. It is about South Caicos. It is about East Caicos, which is not inhabited yet. But uh, it is about Middle Caicos, North Caicos, and Providentialis. Uh, there's Parrot Key. There's Pine Key. There are others, uh, Amagris Key, where people are living. The Turks and Caicos is, is one of the most prosperous islands, uh, islands in the Caribbean today. It has been designated for more than, I believe, seven years now by travel magazines as being as having one of the best beaches in the world, that is Grace Bay Beach in Providencialis. Today again, as I said, we will look at the religious heritage. Now, I am not looking so much at, at the theology. I, I want you to know that uh, when I was growing up, and I believe that it continues, that the religious heritage of the Turks and Caicos Islands is Christian. It is definitely a Christian tradition. When we were growing up, I, we had the Anglican Church, which I will show you some uh, photos of, and particularly we will focus on the graveyards, which hold some of the history, which, which hold the names of people who have been, been gone long time ago. We will focus on Anglican Church, uh, as I've stated in other episodes. Uh, they have two buildings in Grand Turk, there is St. Thomas, and there is St. Mary's. It happens to be the tradition from, the, from which my mother came, the Anglican Church. Uh, her folks were from Sol Key, but she grew up in Grand Turk, and she attended St. Thomas and St. Mary's. The, we will also focus on the Methodist Church, the Grand Turk Methodist Church. We will take a look at their tombs, the tombs in their, in, their, in their graveyard. The Methodist Church, I also have a connection because my grandmother, on my father's side, Laura Adams Missick, her family uh, were members of the Methodist Church. And then we will also finally focus on the Baptist Church, the Salem Baptist Church, where I grew up, where my father was the chief deacon and where I received uh, 
the Lord into my life as my Lord and Savior. In other words, for those of you who are not Christian, that is how I became a Christian. And that is, a, that is the way I believe that one becomes a Christian. For our millennials, I will say that I made a connection with God through Christ at the age of 12. It was a wonderful transformation for me. And so we will focus on these three churches. Now, there were other churches when I was growing up. You had the Church of God of Prophecy. You had the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And they contribute immensely to the religious heritage of the Turks and Caicos Islands. I will focus more on them in future um, episodes. And I, I want to commend also the many, many other ministries that are being developed. As I speak in here in 2018, there are many other ministries that are being developed that are outside of what, what we call mainline denominations. The, the Anglican, the Methodist, and the Baptist Church would, have, would be called mainline denominations. So I want you to take a look at this, this, this recounting of the uh, history, and particularly as we look at some of the tombs and the graveyards and remember some of the people, the pioneers of our faith. The Bible says that we should tell it to generations following. And I hope that this will be a blessing to you. May God bless you as you watch this episode of this documentary, Reclaiming the Culture and Heritage of the Turks and Caicos Islands. Thank you so much. This is one of the historic churches here in Grand Turk. This is St. Thomas Church. Um, my mother was Anglican. It's an Anglican church, um, perhaps the oldest church in the Turks and Caicos. A lot of people are buried in this yard. I would love to see if I can get in there but I don't think so to see some of the historic graves. Either way, uh, they, uh, a lot of new people are being buried here now, but before, this was basically the, gr the place for the graves of the slave masters or other whites that, uh, who would not allow blacks to sit here. And um, I told her, it's not my father, he's in the Baptist family. But um, he came from, James Missing again was one of the slave owners, uh, from which I think my grandfather, great-grandfather and others got their uh, name. This is a plaque, I'm not quite sure if we can read it here. It says, the St. Thomas Anglican Church that was built by Bermudan settlers in 1823-24 was the first church built on Grand Turk and also had the distinction of being the second church built in the Bahamas archipelago. Um, archipelago. Uh, at first the church was thought to have been built from stone transported from Bermuda. However, uh, since the church is located near the old quarry, uh, the materials also may have been obtained from Grand Turk. It is most likely that the rocks were obtained from the nearby quarry and the wood was imported from Bermuda. St. Thomas Church is a very sturdy, cut stone building 
with some walls as thick as two feet. The hard stones that were hand hewn were set in a primitive mortar of lime mixed with turtle oil. Again, St. Thomas uh, Anglican Church. This is one of two churches owned by the Anglicans. The other one is at the other end of the island, uh, on the west side, called St. Mary's. They use that more for the services. That is the pro-cathedral. There's someone preparing now for a funeral tomorrow here. This is the Grand Turk Methodist Church. This is, again, one of three churches. Uh, as you can see up there, it was built in 1930. Um, it is uh, a community church. Um, again, we have the Anglican, the Methodist, the Baptist. Those are the three main churches here. And um, they've kept it up really well. Still continue to have services here, and unfortunately, a lots of funerals. Uh, and as you can see, there's a lot of graveyards here. And um, we'll uh, take a quick look at it. it. Seems to be the only church that's open. Yeah. Hey, how you doing, man? Here we go, right? All right. Good to see you. What's the, what, what are they doing? Some renovation? Hmm? They doing a renovation here? Yeah, we fixing it in here. Oh, they're fixing up. Okay. How are things going with you, man? Everything all right. All right. It is. T tell me again. Tell me your name again. Sims. 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 What, what do they call you? They just call you? Jose. 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 Yeah, Jose. From over back, right? Yeah. yeah. But my right name is Raymond. Raymond. Okay. I um, name Jose Alpha. Jose Tucker. Oh, Jose Tucker. Yeah. Man, my mother's family was related to the Tuckers. Um, I look up for my uncle. I got people around you. I don't want to go to the church. I still have to ask for something. Yeah. This is still I a yeah. beautiful church, that, man. You see that big thing there? Yeah. Look, you see that same American vision up there? Yeah, they say that thing ain't no good. What do you think about that? Let me go over yeah. here and look at the... Uh, look at it. So you can see this, this church is filled with graves. And only members or people, well, mainly members, especially the Methodist Church, would be buried here. I have uh, this woman here. I'm looking at this beautiful, what a beautiful tomb. Oh, my goodness. I've never seen anything like this before. This is so wonderful. And um, it's this person uh, who died. She died in, 19, in 2013. Is Vivian Elaine B. Morris. Now, when I see that last name, I remember mem the Adams side of my family would be buried in here because they were members of the Methodist Church and the Anglican Church. But uh, I want to just see if I can find the grave of uh, my first cousin, uh, Evan Storm Missick. Uh, he was buried in here. He um, had a lot of heart attacks run in my family. As I said, my father died of a heart attack. He was 67, 67 years old. And, um, and then um, I, I had my other brother, Richard, who lived in Nassau in the Bahamas. He died of a heart attack at 56. And then I remember my cousin Storm coming back from England where he was honored by the queen for being one of the most successful businessmen here on this island. Uh, right in the footsteps of my grandfather Parnett and uh, we uh, he was with us in New York and two weeks later I got the call from his daughter Hillary that her daddy had died of a heart attack almost the exact same way my father died of a heart attack so and I've had a quadruple bypass at age 46 but I'm still going uh, one of these graves is his grave Surprised that they don't have his name name on it. Uh, let's see who's this. Here he is, right here. This is Evelyn. Uh, this is in loving memory of uh, uh, my husband, uh, uh, my father, uh, your grandfather, 
dear friend. He's a friend to everybody on this island. People love him to death. As uh, my cousin Edith said, the mystics were always giving. The storm would give people, help people out. We, we know, we, we somehow we have it in our blood how to share with people. That's why I'm sharing this documentary. So this is in loving memory of Evan Rensford, Missick. Uh, now I noticed they're spelling his name with two S's. He spelled it, he was born with one S and his brother Donald who lives in Canada. Uh, he spells his name with one S. So there's always that confusion here, but that's okay. That That's a minor issue. And I think right next here, is his sister Alice Missick, Alice uh, Missick, who uh, uh, was buried, I believe she's buried right here next to him, uh, or her grave could be someplace else, but she, uh, Alice, we call her Punks, she's the grandmother of basketball great Trevor Arisa, and um, again, a very loving woman. Uh, I was here for both their funerals. In fact, I preached the eulogy for Storm's funeral and uh, came and participated in Punk's funeral a few, just a year or two later, and uh, the church was packed with people. I mean, it was so packed, they had to put a tent outside there. Um, the storm was really loved by everyone, and it's gone too soon, but as I would say, uh, he's gone in God's time, uh, 56 years old. He did more than people who live to be 106 did. Uh, these little graves here would be for children. Um, they really need to preserve these graves because these graves tell the history of our people. This is Salem Baptist Church. This is the church where I grew up. My father was the deacon and um, the chief deacon when I was growing up. And uh, the chief deacon was almost like a bishop. <laughs> ran the church. Uh, it was a much smaller church. This one was just built um, about right after the, the Hurricane Ike in uh, 2000, after 2008. And if you look right in the middle there, you will see that they kept a replica of the old building. They built it into the new building. <laughs> just told by my cousin Edith that this building, and I was told by the pastor last year when I visited, that this building was uh, damaged again. The roof is dam was damaged last year uh, by Hurricane Irma and Maria. Um, and uh, they're still trying to fix the roof. Apparently, as uh, she said, that most of the, the homes were, all, all, just about all of the homes were affected. And um, they uh, they cannot uh, find enough contractors to repair the roof, the roofs of all the houses. Uh, this is a beautiful church, one of the most beautiful buildings now here in uh, Turks and Caicos. Growing up, we had a wonderful time. We spent all day in this church. Uh, we would start in the morning. Uh, with worship service around 11 or so and uh, in the uh, at Sunday school uh, would be at three o'clock in the afternoon we had no television back then so we would uh, come back for Sunday school and then we would come back in the evening for the evening service which was which attracted other people from the Methodist and the and the uh, Anglican Church um, these are old graves. These are these are new grave. This is Mrs. Gloria Henschel. That uh, she just died uh, in last year. She was 105 years old, I believe. She grew up in this church and was a very one of the mothers of the church. A very wonderful woman. Uh, these are new graves here, but these but these are old graves. And I remember these graves. They they were almost open when we were growing up as kids. And some of the things we would do is we would literally go down to the grave uh, as mischievous young people. But these are more of the colonial people. This is uh, the grave of Reverend uh, Earl Hall. Uh, he was, I believe, the first 
black native pastor of this church. Um, he was also married to my sister, Catherine, and uh, they have a son, Earl, Hall, June, Earl Richard Hall, um, who is a professor at Morehouse College now in the United States. Uh, this is uh, the, the grave of uh, Mr. Edmund Gollin, who uh, preceded my, uh, who uh, succeeded my father as the chief deacon of the, of the church. Uh, and that's his, his wife, buried next to him. Um, let me go back here at uh, family plots. Um, the missing uh, where my grandfather and others are buried. Um, this is, uh, we had a family reunion here and we'd like to encourage that. Um, uh, back in uh, about five years ago, two, six years ago. And uh, this is uh, the grave of my grandfather. You see uh, Nathaniel uh, Parned. Uh, it really should be P A R Parned. I, I use that little word there. Um, Missick. Now, his last name is M I S I C K, but because of the controversy of the spelling of our names, of our name um, Missick and all the one S or two S, I added in parentheses the two S's, but he was really one S Missick. Uh, and this is his son, one of his sons, Donald Lewis Missick, Uncle Donald. Um, but his wife also, my grandmother, uh, Laura Adams uh, Missick, is also buried in here, even though I think she was Mathers. Um, and she was the daughter of Kate Spencer. Uh, Kate was the daughter of Ethelbert Richard Spencer, a, one of the white Bermudans uh, who lived right across the street from uh, Old House. Uh, this, is, uh, this is my Uncle Stanley's grave. Stanley was one of the younger children of my grandmother, Laura Adams Missick, uh, who died of ovarian cancer after having 12 children. Uh, Uncle Stanley and Aunt Catherine were, um, were sent to their grandmother, Martha Williams Missick, who was married to my great-grandfather, but she was from Laramis. And, um, she, uh, Laura Miss Kinkis, and then she went, uh, after she divorced my great-grandfather, she went to the Dominican Republic and, um, and brought them up, brought her and Aunt Rosita and Aunt Catherine and Uncle Stanley and, and many other children up, uh, children of the family, Miss Vivian Astrid Peters, uh, whom I've done a documentary on, but, uh, these are, these are the missing graves right here in this corner here. Now, let me walk over here where we do have some other plots. This is the back of the Baptist church. There's still a lot of uh, land left. For, it's a uh, privilege to be able to bury your loved ones here in a churchyard. You have to be a member of a church. Um, otherwise, you go into the public cemetery. Victorina, we call Arena, who was named after her grandmother, my father's first wife, Victorina. Victorina Elizabeth Malcolm, but she was Victorina Elizabeth Missick Malcolm. Oh my gosh, I was here for that funeral. And she, Arena was such a loving person. I mean, she just helped everybody. Uh, she was beautiful. She was a wonderful, wonderful person. But uh, she was so loved. Uh, as you can see, she was born in 1958 and died in 2011, and she has beautiful children that are left. Irina, God bless you. We miss you so much. And right next here to her grave is uh, her father. This is her father's grave. This is my father's brother, Perry, Franklin Perry Missick. And then right behind him is my father, uh, James Dennis Missick who uh, actually, uh, he was born here in uh, 1901, either 1901 or 1903. My, my Jane, sister Jane always tries to push it up a little bit to 1903. But the, the tragedy of it is that he, uh, he lived in New York when he was a young boy, but I never liked it and uh, sent me away to Jamaica to school. 
uh, uh, boarding school, and uh, I told him I wanted to go to New York because my mother was born in New York, but came back here to live after her mother died. The rest is history, but tragically, when I asked him to, I asked him to send my mother and my brothers and sisters up, my brother and sisters up, and they came up. They were able to go to school and uh, for free, which is what I kept arguing with him about, and. Um, and they came and we set up an apartment and finally my father said in 1970, May of 1970, that he came up, he said he'll come up for the summer because he couldn't stand the cold. Uh, he was much, he was 20 years older than my mother, uh, so he was having heart problems. And two hours later he died of a heart attack, of a heart attack in my arms on Crown Street in Brooklyn. And we brought his body back here, we took it to the Bahamas for my other brother Richard, o'clock interrupted the worship service and uh, it's the longest funeral that I've ever been to because everybody loved him uh, James Missick he was captain he was a deacon he was a pilot um, he was a great leader he was leader of the head of the uh, benevolence savings and loan association he was an odd fellow as a mason and because of that the funeral lasts from 11 that morning until um, 7 o'clock that evening uh, it was very scary for me as a young man. Um, I uh, was only 19 years old, but uh, it was it was a trying time. Uh, there used to be a door right here to the church that buried him right next to the door. He had his plot. He actually had this tomb uh, made long before he died, because also in this tomb, who was first buried in this tomb, was my one of his, his older sisters, uh, Aunt Alice. Missy Clark, she's buried in this grave also. And at some point, we need to get her family to put a plaque up here too. So, uh, but again, that, that's my father, uh, James Missy. Uh, so th this church, this building as we see it now, was built by those of us who were children of the church. led by my nephew, Franklin Missy, and uh, Mr. Cecil Williams. Uh, and uh, they just came after us and said, we need you to put some money into it. We need to, uh, one of the things Mr. Williams said was when we had the ceremony here and they gave me a plaque uh, and others, uh, he said that he woke up one morning and said, why, how come my house looks better than God's house?